Xena Warrior Princess series review. After having waged brutal war for a long time, Xena finally retires and finds herself with a new companion, Gabrielle, from a small village who wants to be a poet. And together they go on many travels typically working to try to right the wrongs of the world. Xena attempting to undo some of the damage she's done, as well as just, in general, help people as part mercenary for hire, and just, in general, you know, lend a hand with her strength and her spirit. The show has a lot of respect for primitive cultures. Other cultures in general, not all of them primitive, and while they do not always show them entirely accurately, you can really tell that, you know, research went into it and they do want to, you know, be respectful of these. There are sequences that you won't see in many other shows of rituals and, you know, dancing rituals, for example. The acting is good. There's a lot of over-the-top acting, but when the show really needs serious acting and dramatic moments, it really delivers most of the time. The over-the-top acting is on account of a generally silly style of humor to the show. It's by Sam Raimi, who is known for his love of the Three Stooges, and if you've watched, well, most of what he's, almost anything that he's done, you know that style of humor. You know, it's quite evident in the Evil Dead movies, maybe especially in Army of Darkness. The characters are, you know, reasonably well developed and go through a lot of interesting changes over the seasons, especially, you know, not only the main characters, but also often recurring characters. In addition to Xena and Gabrielle, we have Joxer, played by Ted Raimi, who is not quite comfortable with the fact that he is not a mighty warrior. He likes to think of himself as such, even though he's kind of a klutz. We have Ares, played to perfection by Kevin Smith, no, not the Jersey one, who just really, you can tell this guy just loves war, craves war, and he wants Xena back, you know. She's like the one that he really wants to be around as far as, you know, mortal women go. We have other gods from, you know, the Greek pantheon. I think it's Greek. Aphrodite played as a sort of tween girl, you know, very... or a valley girl, you know, the, just that kind of, not the brightest, you know, and just really well done again. And other than the Greek pantheon, we also have a lot of myths from other, you know, other mythologies. We meet their gods as well, and their monsters. The effects get better as the show went along, and in general, the show is a bit on a budget. And I would also say that the budget more goes to sets and costumes more often than effects and when you see some of the stuff they actually managed to pull off in those two areas you can really understand why. The show got a full I believe six seasons and there's something to keep you interested along the way you know as it goes you know, the first couple of seasons maybe more introduce the world and the characters, and then as it moves further, more dramatic and epic things start to happen. 
and there are some really enthralling season storylines. The themes of, you know, combat versus peace and acceptance and such are quite prevalent and they are dealt with rather well. You know, the show does take a side, but it also isn't really naive about this conflict. It's also a show that is about not only physical strength, but also inner strength, discipline. And not in, you know, the boring German way, but, you know, it's about how you need to master your psyche also in order to be really good at much of anything that really takes effort. It doesn't just glorify violence. The action, the show itself at time at at least one point refers to it as you know, ch chop sake, I think is the phrase. It's not you know the greatest, and it's not really trying to be. The choreography can be pretty good, but you know if you've seen Xena fight once, that's kind of how it typically is. She just takes people, you know, takes the enemies out quite easily, you know, sometimes comically. She doesn't have a lot of trouble in that regard. This does make her a less, you know, you don't feel as much of a, th of a sense of threat regarding her character. You don't feel like she's in danger that much, but it does also make it more compelling when she actually does have trouble fighting and the show isn't just about the physical fighting often it's strategy that really wins the day and you know trickery smarts and and there are some quite impressive battles in the ser series We have some guest stars that pop up now and then. One of the most fun to watch, at least I would say, is Autolycus, the master thief, played by old Raimi favorite Bruce Campbell. Raimi puts him in pretty much everything he can, and this is one of the places where he just shines. He is a ton of fun to watch every single time he appears. The stories range from the more serious to just silly ones and not all of them are equally good. But all in all, the show is definitely worth watching if you find yourself liking, you know, watch a couple of episodes, see if it's your sort of thing. And if you like it, you know, I would say keep watching. It never really completely lets you down. And the finale is pretty good. It's... It's one of the better series finales I've seen, I would say. Please rate and comment. And hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.